What's up guys, my name is Javi and welcome to a little Photoshop tutorial today and uh, this one's going to be separate from my how to use Photoshop so uh, this one's going to be a kind of community tutorial for you guys today so uh, as you see right here I have a Cinema 4D rendered out Darth logo um, you know I'm going to do this tutorial not because I do this style I have no interest in doing like the normal you know mainstream YouTube background style uh, most of you probably know what I'm talking about but um, I'm going to do this tutorial because I know that a lot of people out there like doing this style. So, um, I know some, the only thing I really know good about it is blending options. I've, for some reason, I've always been good at, um, blending options whenever I used to do, or I'd do this. I'd never really done this style to be honest with you, but I just know the blending options to do good looking renders in Photoshop. So, uh, today I'm going to teach you guys, so basically, uh, you know, you do your fancy stuff in Cinema 4D, your Greebler, your Throusy, your Reaper Effects, whatever you guys want to do. I hardly ever use Cinema 4D anymore, I'm all 2D to be honest with you, so, yeah, that's just me. So, basically what you want to do is double click on the layer and then go to Gradient Overlay, this is what I normally do first, and then you want to find a nice light gradient overlay, starting from a gray. Uh, you don't really do want to go too light, um, so... I mean, you can have like a little darker, whatever. Uh, you can click OK on that and then go to Blend Mode Overlay. Now you can see it's going to get a lot lighter. I like this effect because it actually shows out the Cinema 4D effects that you actually spent hard time on doing. So after that, you're probably going to go to Drop Shadow, go to about 35%. You can go to about 20 and go to 30 now you can barely see this because it's a transparent background, but uh, you can uncheck global light too. It doesn't really matter. Um, after that, you're going to want to go to inner glow, put this up to 100, and drag that up to white, and put this on overlay. Now, you can't really see that, but I mean, if you click on and off, you can see it somewhat. Uh, it does make a difference, I think, at least. Uh, so, you know, it's a good looking layer style. Uh, sometimes you can use bevel and emboss, but you just put it down to like 20. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. I, I never really use it. And yeah, so that's about it uh, for that. Um, that's about it for the blending modes. So after that, you want to rasterize it, and then you can go to your, your filter gallery. So uh, normally after this, you want to go to your filter gallery right here, and you want to go to... Uh, this is what normal, like a, a lot of people do. They go to glowing edges. Now, obviously, for this one, since it has, um, actually, what you want to do is duplicate the layer, Command-J, and then go to Filter Gallery. And then you go to Glowing Edges. I'd honestly just take this, uh, you can, you can actually leave it up. I'd, I'd put it down to, like, 5, though, to be honest with you. Uh, smoothness, uh, you know, that does not look good, so you want to, <laughs> you want to keep that down. Um, uh, you can obviously turn up the edge width. But I'm going to keep it at 1, and I'm going to press OK on that. So after that, you want to bring down the opacity. I'd say 40. That looks pretty good. Uh, then you want to go back to the original layer again. Duplicate it. Command-J. Drag that above the glowing edges layer. Go to Filter Gallery. And then you can add really any other effects that you want. Um, Ocean Ripple is kind of cool. Uh, you can see that I used to use this uh, whenever I did Cinema 4D text. I used Ocean Ripple a lot. Uh, five one I think was what I used. So, I mean, you can turn it up more, and then it gets like really ripply. And then you can bring the on the opacity sixty maybe. Nah, let's do fifty. You guys can mess with the opacity by yourself, but it's just all personal preference on that. Uh, otherwise, you can go back to filter gallery. And uh, let's see here. Ascented edges works kind of cool. This basically just like makes it more lightened. Uh, that looks pretty cool. Filter gallery is just a lot of cool, just like play around stuff. So obviously spatter wouldn't look too good. Um, artistic. Let's go to yeah. Let's go to yeah. Angled strokes. I've actually never used this. It looks pretty cool. There's like a nice blur to it. But yeah, after that, um, you can merge all the layers, and then you have this like cool little blurred Darth logo. You can still do more effects with it. I mean, you don't have to do the blur or whatever. So just go back, and then delete that layer, and then it's pretty much uh, now. This is what I'd recommend. 
If you have all your final effects on the logo, merge all your layers, go to Filter, go to Sharpen, and Sharpen. And then it's going to look a heck of a lot better. It's going to look really high definition. It's going to look really nice. So that's my tip on the tutorial. Uh, that's how you guys get good logos out of Cinema 4D into Photoshop. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and maybe a favorite and a nice comment down below. And if you're new, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.